So parallel perpendicular lines, like I said, there's there's two main chunks of this. The first chunk is parallel. Alright, so we're going to define that with two main bullet points. The slopes of parallel lines are equal. Pretty long definition. The slopes of parallel lines are equal. That's one main point of that. And then it's not necessary to state, but it's good to state that vertical lines are parallel and horizontal lines are parallel. Screen leg. Who is that? Do you see tape? I can't. It's like a ball. Oh. Alright. That's why I had to take that one off. Is it attached to you? Yeah. The pin? Yeah. Alright, horizontal lines are parallel. So you're going to see a couple things. Write an equation parallel to that one. Y equals 3x plus 7. Nailed it. Wait, why? Oh. oh, the slopes are the same. The slopes are the same. What the y? Doesn't matter. The lines are parallel because the slopes are the same. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the, one of the overarching concepts we're trying to get across. If the slopes are equal, lines are parallel. So, this is a regular, right? The regular class yes. should get here. What would the pre B class state? Uh, you, could, you could say this. Y equals 3X plus 4 and Y equals 3X plus 7 are parallel. Give me another pair of parallel lines. Negative a pre-AP three, version. Negative 3Y equals X plus 4. Negative 3Y equals X minus 2. No. That wouldn't work. Yeah, I was so confused. And then if you divide by 3 and negative 3, then they have the same slope. You said negative 3y equals x plus 4. And then I said negative 3y equals x minus 2. Okay, now that, yes, you are correct. That would work. Still, right, that is just manipulating this version here. Give me a pre AP, a, a not so pre AP example. Uh, yeah, x, x equals 3, x equals 2. That's, that's the not so, that's like way pre-AP over here. And this x equals 3 and x equals 2 is like pre-AP. All right? Taking two vertical lines and saying they're parallel. All right? Non pre-AP would be this right here. Just two slope intercept. That's all I care about. If you know that, you got it. That's what I want. Okay, that's chunk one. Here's chunk two, perpendicular. Uh, perpendicular lines. Are opposite reciprocals. And I do not like that word. Is anybody... Here, opposite reciprocals and know what it is Fractions. automatically. Yeah, if it's like 4, if y equals 4x, then the opposite reciprocal is y equals negative 4x. Okay, I like to say I like to say flip it, change it. That makes more sense to me. It's a lot funner to say, more fun to say, flip it, change it. And that's exactly where it goes. Or you get that Missy Elliott song. You know, Missy Elliott is really good at finding perpendicular lines. Because she puts her thing down, she flips it, and she reverses it. I don't get it. Can you repeat it one more time? Missy Elliott. She goes to put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. That's like saying opposite reciprocal. 
I'll play it for you later. Okay, thank you. I'll play it for you later. All right. The other thing that's of note. Horizontal lines and vertical lines are perpendicular. Okay, so two overarching concepts. Parallel, samesies, equal. Perpendicular, opposite reciprocals, or flip and change it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just a kind of an exploration on is it parallel or is it perpendicular to kind of clean up some common mistakes. So I'm just going to give you two slopes. <coughs> And you can answer parallel or perpendicular. If you have two slopes, three and three, parallel or perpendicular? Parallel. Okay. Is what is, you know what the question is? What is perpendicular to zero? Is there anything? Negative zero. <laughs> 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 what is perpendicular to zero? I'm going to write zero as a fraction. X equals zero. Oh my god. Wow. One over zero is zero. Negative one over zero is. We just wrote that. We just wrote that. Horizontal lines and vertical lines are perpendicular. You guys understand what's going on here, but it's those small cases. A zero line looks like this. Yeah. An undefined long line looks like this. So zero and undefined are perpendicular. So basic things. What is perpendicular to negative three over seven? seven. seven. You guys got that. All right? No, this is regular. Should know this too. What is perpendicular to undefined? Zero. 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 Now you got it. Okay, so let's enter the math world. You're going to see three phases of learning. I'm going to give you a graph and ask you to identify. I'm going to give you an equation and ask you to identify parallel, yes or no. I'm going to give you points and ask you to identify parallel, yes or no. Then I'm going to give you two lines on a graph and ask you to identify parallel, yes or no. All right, three, three things here. All parallel questions. The answer to this question is yes or no. Are these lines parallel? Yes. Okay, what is the slope of this equation? Three. three. What is the slope of this equation? Also three. Also three. So the answer to the question? Yes. The answer to the question is yes. <laughs> Determine whether the lines are parallel. You can't say parallel. You have to answer it. Yes. Yes, sir. So, but if you have a line that's y equals 3x plus 12, and you have another line that's also y equals 3x plus 12, they have the same slope, but they're not parallel. Okay. Is this 3x plus 12? No, but if it was, would it, so would it be parallel? Or would it, would it be, be the same, same line? Yeah, it'd be the same line. Yeah. You have different, different line intersections. So, if two lines, here's what Tim's asking. Line one. If that's like line two. Have are those parallel? No. no, they're the same line. Okay. So option two. Here is a set of two coordinates. You might want to write this one down. Here's a set of two coordinates. I want to know if negative 3, 3 and 1, 4 or f of x and g of x are parallel. Is the line that connects those two points, are they parallel? Are f of x and g of x parallel? 
This is a little more mathy. You have to establish what the slope is by using the slope formula. So easy money, what's the formula? Y1 minus Y1. Okay, so once we've established this, we can start pulling points out of the problem. We'll call this the red line. I don't know, you confused me. What is it? Negative 7 over 2. Okay, the red line has a slope of negative 7 over 2. I must establish the slope of the blue line. Are those the same thing? No. So what is the answer to this question? No. no. Bilingual answers. Right in French. Are those parallel? No, we. I'm going to say, how do you say no in French? No, no in German. No baguette. No, everywhere. Okay, so I don't want you to write this because I know you've been writing furiously the whole class. Yeah. It's a big X. I don't want you to draw the graph. So, the third phase. If I give you a graph and ask you, are those lines parallel? How would you do that? You have to two points of each line. You keep the line going. Can you just can you look at it right now and say yes or no? Yes. yes. They are parallel. No. no. It's not a they are. It's they do not. not they are. They are not. They are not. Because if you keep the line going, the lines go on forever, indicated by the arrows. One, two, three, four, five. Negative five. One, two. Negative five over two. One, two, three, four. One, two. Negative four. Are they parallel? No. No. The answer to this question? Is no. No or no. Are they Canadian? What about this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we go on to perpendicular. The answer to this question is yes or no. Are they perpendicular? Yes. Yes. What is the slope of this one? Five. Are they flip it, change it? Yes. Because there's an imaginary one under there. Flip the fraction. 5 over 1 becomes 1 over 5. Change it from positive to negative. Yes. The answer is yes. Can we write this one down? I would write this one down. This one and the next one should be your notebooks. Those are our last two questions. Is she writing this down? You understand why we spent so much time recovering these concepts? Yes. Yes. All right, so now we're not bogged down by the fact that I can't find slope or I cannot write an equation. Now we're just at the point where it's geometry, parallel or perpendicular. We'll call that the blue line. Call this the pink line. you look at it right now, you might be tricked and think no, because those are not opposite reciprocals. 
But as you manipulate and reduce this fraction to negative 3 over 2, two and over positive 3 over, oops, two over three. positive 2 over 3, have those fractions been flip and change it? Yes. Yes, they are perpendicular. All right, so let's get to the what you might see on your test type questions. Yes. The first one is kind of lame. The second one is probably one of my favorite questions in this entire year. Oh, my. Sorry. Very? So it's hard? No. It's just my favorite question. So here's your lame-ish question. It says, write an equation of a line parallel to y equals negative 3x minus 5 and contains the point negative 1 8. So instead of writing all that, you can write this. Parallel to y equals negative 3x minus 5 and must contain the point negative 1 8. So you can write that down and I'll get you the whole problem. So in order for this problem to work, I need two things to happen. One, it must have a parallel slope. And two, it must contain the point negative 1, 8. So Garrett says, before that, hold on, Tim, what do you have? They have to have the same slope, so you already have the slope. So then with the slope and a point. What is the slope? Okay, so step one accomplished. I need my slope to be negative three. That is step one. Okay? Now, as a student, there's many different pathways to go down. We can go Garrett's way, use y equals mx plus b. So, or, he, now he heard point slope. I have a slope. I have a point. Use point slope, just like Tim said. So to use point slope... Y minus, what's the Y coordinate I want? What's the slope I want? The three. Um, three. Negative three. The X value that I want. Minus negative one becomes plus one. So here's what Aurora is doing. She solved it in Y equals MX plus B form. If you distribute this stuff out, wait a minute, and be positive by the same negative. So you notice that in standard form or in slope intercept form, the slopes are the same, but the y intercepts are different. Okay. Does this formula satisfy the question? Yes. A slope equation that goes through that point. So you do not have to travel down here and keep mapping. All right? Here's our parallel question. Now my favorite question. You ready? Um, yeah. I even put a smiley face because it makes me happy. Or... It's the last question that makes you happy. So, what is an equation of a line perpendicular to 3x plus 4y equals 1? It would be a negative 3x over 3. So is that no. in... Can you see the slope of this? Yes. Can you, you can see it? No. It's in standard form. Well, thanks, Siri. My phone does it all the time. Can you see the slope? You cannot see the slope, so you're going to have to manipulate it. Divide everything by four. Like 
talking eight, about? Three, four, six, what, what, four, Gary, what's your issue with this? It's like the X. It's not, it's not like it's in Y MX, <laughs> MX plus V. It's like Y B plus MX. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. What's the number tied to the x? Wait, what? What's the number tied to the x? Negative 3 over 4. That's the number I need. That's the number I care about. I know that this is the slope of the problem. But I need a perpendicular slope. I need a perpendicular slope. So it'd be 4, 4 over 3. Flip it. Change it from negative to now satisfied condition number one. I have a perpendicular slope, right? Yes? So now I need to write an equation that is perpendicular and contains the point 2, 5. So I use point slope. Y minus 5. 5. Okay, if you live that slope intercept life, you could distribute it out. Y minus 5 equals 4 thirds x <coughs> minus 8 thirds. You're like, ew, gross, right? You still have to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 5. I'm sorry, add 5 to both sides. Put I put 15 thirds, which is 5. Because that's a, this has a third as a fraction. Watch. Y equals 4 thirds x plus 7 thirds. Now, look, let's look. Here's the only reason I did that. Is this easier than doing this? Yeah. So once you get here, you can use it. Or wait. There's, there's more. There's more. <laughs> what if I change this back to standard form? You can do it. Why do it? So I multiply everything by 3. Watch. I get 3y equals 4x plus 7. Subtract 4x from both sides. Negative 4x plus 3y equals 7. Why do you do that have to be like a positive, yeah, yeah. positive, yeah. positive yeah. A. So when you have to change it to 4x minus 3y equals negative 7. But do you see the relation? Yeah. That's cool. It was, it was 3, 4. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty cool, right? Can you just do it like that? Now, if you knew that you could switch the numbers and change one sign, or like you said, because it's in standard form, it should be written, change the numbers. Oh. Change the sign. And it has to go, it has to go through the point two five, right? It's just a fun question. So at the end of the day, look, this is where you stop. All the rest of that's just me being nerdy. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Is it a coincidence that like three and four on the bottom add up to seven and negative four and three equals one on the bottom? Yeah, it's because it's the five and the two, you get eight minus 15, which equals negative seven. So that would have gotten you your other deal. Um, so I need one more grade. 